today I'll be talking about um, the history of OCT imaging in surgery. Um, it's been 45 years, so 25 years since the development of OCT, but 45 years only since the invention of pars plane of vitrectomy. And thus our field, that's Bob Mockamer in his um, workshop, Jean-Marie Perel, and uh, earlier someone talked about the 17 gauge uh, instrument shoved into the eye, and yes, that's an ever-ready battery um, running the system. That was the early system. So pars plane of vitri retinal surgery required new tools. There's a bent needle and new um, operating microscope and new techniques. While the tools have advanced, and at Duke we'd worked a lot on surgical tool development up until the early 2000s, but the microscope, no um, disrespect to those of microscope companies, but it appeared to lag behind. Um, OCT imaging has revolutionized our pre- and post-operative assessment of patients. So the orange view, or as I call it, Helmholtz view, 1850s, the idea of looking in with white light um, to view the fundus, and although we can identify that orange-red circle, the cross-section from OCT is dramatically different and informs the surgeon both before and when we wait after surgery. But the surgeon goes back to the classical on FOSS view during surgery. As you can see at the image below, that was a young child that I operated on, and although you could see the dramatic membrane I removed, I left a thin wisp behind that was significant and required another surgery. So stage A, um, was intraoperative OCT. So I'm going to talk about three stages of development of intraoperative OCT. Stage A was 2D, outside the microscope and at a pause in surgery. And um, basically, Joe Isaac and I met in Jim Fujimoto's lab at MIT. Um, I was working for the Air Force, and Jim Fujimoto was funded by the Air Force uh, for the development of OC, for a part of aspects of the development of OCT. Um, Joe came to Duke in 2001, and I've been... Um, pleading with him for intraoperative, but at that time we only had time domain. Portable imaging, in 2007 we had this um, research system from Bioptogen that we had uh, taken under research to the OR, and uh, the Bioptogen in Visu, as you've heard, 2012 handheld system available for use in the operating room to image both before and after surgery, rather than waiting till the patient seen in post-op to realize one has not achieved surgical goals. Stage B, then, was microscope-integrated real-time 2D scans. So this is viewing 3D volumes at a pause in surgery. And as you've seen earlier, one can visualize B scans during surgery. So again, a full volume would be maybe surgeon guidance, but a B scan at least gives us some of the information, not necessarily enough to guide full three-dimensional movements. Suzanne Binder in Vienna was working with Carl Zeiss Meditech at the same time that um, Joe Isaac and my team were working on the development of the intraoperative system. So stage B is now currently commercial. Several companies, including the Bioptogen Leica system that you see on the left, the N-Focus, um, that was talked about earlier today, and the Carl Zeiss Meditech system. Justice Ellers, who was a fellow with us at Duke earlier, is now at Cleveland Clinic working with Peter Kaiser and Sue Neal. And they've um, evaluated the um, rescan system and basically showing the advancement to a monocular heads-up display. So remember, a system is not useful unless we can get feedback back to the surgeon, surgeon-driven need. And what I'm going to talk about is what we've been working on, which is where is OCT going? So we currently have the first stage of systems in the operating rooms, but 4D MIOCT, which is 3D volumes over time, is probably where we're heading. Need an integrated scanner. That's what Kenny Tows developed. Oscar um, has developed a swept source OCT to link to this. GPU-based imaging, so it's really the throughput. It's the um, path to computation and rendering, which is using uh, basically the gaming software, and they won the NVIDIA Global Award, Brenton Keller and Christian Veland, and then stereo heads-up display. By combining this together, then, the surgeon can integrate with this so that instead of looking down on the retina and having the B-scan view that you see here, or the retina view, one turns into it, and it's more like Google Street View. Um, so if we come down now, the surgeon can actually identify forceps interacting with the surface. And like with OCT in the clinic, surgeons will initially say, what do I need that for? Once surgeons start using it, and you realize what you can see with the interaction between instrument and retina, or instrument and beneath the retina, um, it becomes a different world. Clearly, we're in the early stages of this technology. So the next stage of OCT is to improve speed and quality of imaging render, display volumes faster, remove artifacts, stabilize systems, 
Intuitive surge in control is going to be critical. Control of the viewpoint, augmented reality, whether you see it as a 3D external screen or as we're working now with um, artificial reality projecting it to the surgeon in an, in an immersive environment. I just have to thank NIH because federal funding has really helped advance this project over the many years. And thank you again for the time to present. Thank you.